So by now, I have unlocked all the weapons that launched with Battlefield 2042 Season 4, that being the AC-9 SMG, the RPT-31 LMG, the RM-68 Assault Rifle, and the Super 500 Shotgun. And, uh... Yeah, look, these weapons, for the most part, have been the highlight of this season as far as content is concerned. So, let's talk about them and where they fit in the grand scheme of things. G'day there once again, viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today, we're going to talk about Battlefield 2042's new weapons and what the best attachment setups are for them so far. So, for simplicity's sake, I figured we would cover these weapons in the order in which you unlock them in the Battle Pass. You know, get the information out in the order of how many people it's going to help at this moment in time. But if you are seeking information about a particular weapon here, I have timestamped that below for your convenience and it's all chaptered throughout this video. So, navigate the video as you see fit, or even come back later as you unlock the weapon for a refresher if you need to as well, whatever works for you. But alright, we'll start off here with the AC-9 SMG, and um, yeah, let me tell you guys, this little package of just straight up death and destruction is here to tell you that size does in fact not matter. This bullet vomit machine is absolutely devastating, rocking a rate of fire that clocks in at just 20 rounds per minute shy of 1100 rounds per minute. Now if you're looking at that number and thinking it looks familiar and wondering why I worded it that way, well that's because it should. 1100 rounds per minute is the fire rate of the K30 submachine gun. So we now have another super fast SMG that is truly built for aggression that is rivaled by few weapons in the game. So the K30 still beats out the AC-9 in theory, right? Well, not quite. While the AC-9 does miss out on beating the K-30's fire rate by a mere 20 rounds per minute, it does come with a better damage per shot that amps this weapon up to a mere 5 shot kill, where the K-30 sits at a 6 shot kill, which effectively gives the AC-9 a slightly better magazine economy for scoring group kills, especially when you're rocking the extended close quarters ammo type. And all of that comes with what to me feels like a much controllable and manageable recoil pattern when compared against the K-30 as well. Look, what I'm trying to say here guys is that this SMG has well and truly muscled its way into the limelight for just pure CQC dominance when compared against the last frontrunner, the K-30. The AC-9 is essentially a pre-nerf K-30 as far as effectiveness is concerned and that is wild stuff. The power creep here with this weapon is very, very real. And spoiler alert, it's a theme that we're going to see a fair bit throughout today's video. The AC-9 is all about those close quarters distances and just performing some incredibly aggressive dentistry on a target's face. I will be honest, you won't hit the broadside of a tank beyond a 50 meter range without some of the most elegant trigger discipline you could ever see, but the weapon just isn't designed for that. If you choose to take this weapon, you're going to be getting nice and close to the bad guys and hanging around them all day like a bad smell. As far as the recommended loadout is concerned here, I don't think it's really disputed that you'll be wanting to run the extended CQC magazine wherever you can. There's literally no benefit in taking a magazine that shaves off rate of fire for a quote unquote longer effective range on such a weapon. For the underbarrel, I primarily run the BCG light grip for an improved weapon accuracy while aiming down the sights, but I've also found that a laser sight can go a long way should you be more of a hip fire Andy, if you will. Barrel wise, the Arcom tactical muzzle brake is the way to go to improve that horizontal kick. The weapon can be a little uh, shaky, so this does help to stabilize the weapon as needed and make it just that little bit more reliable, if you will. But all right, moving on here. The next weapon we're going to be looking at is the RPT-31 LMG, which I think caught a lot of the community off guard, to be honest. When DICE first teased this weapon, it was under the premise that it would be this quote-unquote heavy-hitting light machine gun that delivered some serious punishment per shot. But, well... That was about as accurate as a statement as DICE is in putting all of their changes in the patch notes for this game. The LMG is an absolute bullet hose, sporting a potential rate of fire when you trick it out for CQC of 790 rounds per minute, which is on a 22 bullet damage model. Hardly the quote unquote heavy hitter that we all expected to see. But nonetheless, I can't deny that the weapon is a bloody beast, folks. While it doesn't crack the rate of fire record for the LMG category, it does come pretty close to it. It does beat out the LCMG completely in that regard, and 
I mean, look at the gameplay, it should speak for itself. Look at how minor that fucking recoil is. This thing is an absolute beamer of a weapon, which when combined with that five shot kill that it sports, I mean, come on now, how can you pass this thing up? Now, it does take some work to get to this point. The short barrel and the standard issue ammunition does go a long way to getting this weapon where it needs to be to sort of reach that quote unquote A game performance. But once you get there, I mean, again, just look at this farm, this industrial level of farm. There are players playing the farming simulator series that would be jealous of the kind of farm that I'm cracking right now. To be honest, it just feels like an M5A3 with a CQC build to me as far as the feeling of the weapon is concerned, just with a 200 round magazine on top of it. And given that it just seems to beat out the M5 in time to kill slightly against body shots based on some loose testing I've done, I think that's a fair comparison to draw. As you can see in the gameplay, if you just sort of want to find an angle and hold it and just let loose, you can just kind of farm away and turn your brain off and play with one arm if you wanted to. I still think there's plenty of room for other LMGs to exist in the category and this doesn't necessarily power creep all of them out of existence entirely, remembering that the LCMG still has that two shot headshot kill in CQC to work with, but this is still a very, very powerful addition to the armory that I will continue to come back to regularly. Attachments wise, again, you should really be building this thing for CQC dominance and amping up that rate of fire as fast as we can. So. Yeah, run the short barrel on this thing with the standard issue ammo to get the best case scenario. For the underbarrel, the STNR laser sight is a really solid choice here as well because I've got to be honest, there are times where just barrel stuffing a bad guy and sorta of turning him into the texture that more resembles paint is far more therapeutic than I'd like to admit. There's really no need to run any recoil or accuracy improving attachments here beyond that because, well again, come on, just look at how accurate this thing is. But okay, taking a quick moment to pause on the primary weapons here, um, the Super 500 shotgun. Look, guys, the Super 500 shotgun can be fun, and it will one-shot someone if you hit them dead center, like completely bang on. But if you are just ever so slightly off target, or you overcorrect your aim in the heat of a firefight just that little bit too much, you can kiss that one-shot kill goodbye completely. With only three rounds in the chamber to work with and a lengthy reload time to boot, it can feel a little bit limiting of a weapon in Battlefield 2042's larger lobby sizes. Truth be told, while this thing does have some novelty to it, and it isn't exactly what I would call useless, there's a good chance I'll just be sticking by the Glock for the time being. But then again, we all knew the Glock was going to remain the king unless this thing was well and truly overpowered, because the Glock in itself is arguably t a touch overpowered. As far as the build is concerned, there's practically no customization here besides your optic and the ammo slot. Legit, just add an optic and call it a day if you want to run this thing. The basic buckshot is all you are going to need here. But all right, all right. Much like DICE and where they place this thing in the battle pass, we have well and truly saved the best for last. We are now at the crown jewels, if you will, the RM68. Allow me to give this weapon the introduction it deserves by bringing your attention to a weapon that we're all familiar with the SCAR. And I'm sure we're all familiar with it because, well, it's been regarded one of the best assault rifles in the game for a long time, you know, with its heavy hitting rounds and drum magazine to boot. Well, what if I told you that the RM68 shares the exact same close quarters damage profile as the SCAR and that it fires 80 rounds per minute faster? Because yeah, it, it does that. And let me tell you folks, the resulting carnage that this assault rifle can perform is nothing short of soul crushing if you're on the receiving end of it with a good player behind the trigger. There's just no denying it, as this weapon is currently balanced, it completely power creeps the SCAR out of the rotation of just being worth picking up. If you're looking for a higher damage assault rifle, this is now your weapon of choice. Hands down, no contention, unless you want to snipe people with the AC-42. Now sure, the largest magazine size you can get on this thing is 30 rounds against the SCAR's 40, but that rate of fire buff well and truly makes it worth it. But surely, for such a boost in damage output, the recoil or accuracy must be severely affected, right? No. This is Battlefield 2042, ladies and gentlemen, a game that is laser beam central, and the RM68 very much got that memo. In fact, this thing almost feels more accurate from both a recoil and chronify perspective than the SCAR at times. If all chat was a thing in this game yet, I'm sure I would have been on the receiving end of some serious rage messages after just locking on to enemy dudes with this no recoil monster. 
So yeah, the gun is worth the grind right now, guys, at least at this given point in time. I can only imagine that this thing will be balanced in due time, but right now it is the epitome of power creep in the game and has completely nullified the scar from existing in the first place. Like the RPT-31, it's going to feel a little under the weather until you unlock some attachments for it, but once you get there, you'll be singing this weapon's praises like nobody's business. Speaking of which, the optimal build here is definitely going to consist of that short barrel and the CQC ammunition here to get that rate of fire up to where you want it to be. As an added bonus as well, the short barrel also comes with that integrated suppressor, so having at least something to help you stay off the minimap is nice to have here and gives you a bit of extra utility with the weapon. As far as the optic is concerned, as always I'm running a 1x. Now, yes, I know that this weapon comes with an integrated canted sight, so you can technically run a longer range scope for more options at once, but truth be told, I hate those canted sights. They are very cumbersome to use, they just cover up so much of the screen real estate that quite frankly I just see myself using a baseline 1x optic anyway. And just as a final bonus, I like to run the MGL laser sight just for that added hipfire accuracy in a pinch, given that we are jamming as much of the weapons build into CQC as possible, and quite frankly, even with a laser sight and not a grip or something like that, it doesn't really need much in the way of accuracy buffs both from a recoil and a cone of fire perspective, so you can get away with just a laser sight and amp up the hip fire a little bit. But folks, there you have it. Those are my thoughts on Battlefield 2042's brand new weapons and some attachment setups to help you use them a little bit more effectively. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to backhand the like button as it does go a long way to supporting the channel. And if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button whilst you're at it so you can stay up to date with new videos and streams right here on YouTube. Also, if you've had a chance to use these weapons, let me know in the comment section down below and let me know your thoughts or any builds that you're running for them as it stands. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one.